that was a little snippet of uh, the fantastic uh, song Love Untold. That was off of uh, Paul Westerberg's second solo album from 1996. Uh, something that I've wanted on vinyl for a while, and it's just ridiculous. So it was originally released on CD. They finally put it out on vinyl, I think in 2013, on 180 gram vinyl. Can't remember what label it's on. Mixed reviews. Uh, but most of the reviews on Discogs are are good enough that I would take a chance on it. But <laughs> uh, the cheapest copy on Discogs right now is hovering around $50. And then there's like a jump up to $90 and above. So what are you going to do in the meantime? You've got to do... <laughs> You've got to do your only option, or one of your only options, and uh, that is uh, another physical media called the Compact Disc. And I happen to have a copy here in my hand. Um, yeah, his second solo album, 1996. It, if you know Paul Westerberg, you know. Paul Westerberg, one of the finest songwriters of our generation, um, I wish he would resurface. He's kind of gone uh, down below for a while. You know, legend has it that he will put together songs in an entire album in his basement in somewhere in Minneapolis. Uh, the last we heard from Paul, he did a project with Juliana Hatfield. This is now coming up on about 10 years ago. So come on, Paul, let's let's have some new material. Let's get interested let's get enthused again yes you probably don't know you don't owe any of us anything but i miss paul westerberg and uh this was a great album uh features two of my favorite drummers out there today uh josh Fries, drummer par excellence um he plays for everybody from sting he was on the Replacements Reunion Tour back in 20, uh, 2012, 2013. Um, the guy is absolutely prolific. He's played with Devo recently as well. Um, just, Josh Fries is, is uh, just an animal on the drums. Incredible fun follow as well on Instagram. So check Josh Fries out on Instagram. Uh, the other drummer, there's two other drummers, Michael Bland, heavy set, African-American guy, absolutely fantastic. He's been with Paul Westerberg um, when he, Westerberg was promoting the Grandpa Boy persona. And um, I think that they were on the Letterman show together for one or two songs. Um, and then Michael Urbano, great indie rock drummer, currently, most recently, has been um, sitting in with Lindsey Buckingham on his touring band. I saw them in Denver uh, this past late spring. Fantastic show. Michael Urbano is a really talented drummer. Uh, but so much for the drummers. Uh, Westerberg did all the guitar playing on this album. Sounds fantastic. Uh, this was kind of a... Um, the germination of this album took a while because the first solo album came out, I think, in 1992, and then we got this in 96. So I, I know that he worked for, with uh, Brendan O'Brien, and then Paul Giordano um, was a co-producer as well. So there were some kind of hiccups in the, in the uh, germination and recording of the album, but it is a fine album, very underrated, as most Paul Westerberg solo albums are. Uh, once Around the Weekend is one of the finer songs that Paul has ever written. Uh, but also, I love uh, Love Untold, Ain't Got Me, Closing Track, Time Flies Tomorrow, also fantastic. Anyway, that is eventually Paul Westerberg. And how about albums that have never been released on vinyl? What are you going to do? You're going to have to play the CD or stream, which I don't really do um, in, in, a, in a home setup. I will stream like on an iPad if I want to preview an album or something like that with uh, some AirPods. But 
How about this great album? Robin Hitchcock and the Egyptians Respect never came out on vinyl. Um, so this is my, the only solution if you want to hear this thing in, in great sound uh, with your two-channel stereo setup. Respect, Robin Hitchcock. I think this is 1990, 1993. Another underrated album that's finally now uh, on vinyl. I think with the, um, the box sets that Bob Mole has put out over the last several years, uh, everything has been pressed, but... Uh, this was kind of a controversial album at the time. He actually has an auto-tuned vocal track on here, uh, Body of Song. Um, kind of got back into electric rock and roll after being uh, in kind of an EDM dance movement for a while. Um, but there are some fantastic songs. Underneath the Days, Always Tomorrow, uh, Days of Rain, High Fidelity, um, only recently available on vinyl, but I have a CD for the time being. So what exactly is the prompt for today's video anyway? What, why am I here talking about CDs suddenly? Um, I occasionally, as I've been demonstrating, have a need to listen to CDs on my system. And I had a crappy old uh, Sony DVD average player. Uh, that was nothing special, and it looked like shit, frankly, against my very nice vintage equipment here, <laughs> which I take pride in. Um, so what I did is I went on eBay and decided to get a vintage. I wanted to get a single drawer CD player, looked around, found uh, a Rotel. Um, and yes, uh, the snobs out there will probably... Uh, chime in on the comments that, well, that's the entry level, level Rotel. Uh, and it's basically got Sony guts inside. I don't care. I think it looks fantastic. It sounds great. Not much money on eBay. My eBay recommendations, if you're shopping for vintage equipment or anything for that matter, make sure you, and, and you know, this can apply to Discogs as well. Make sure you take your time, you research the seller, how long have they been on the platform, what kind of reviews do they have? Are they mainly positive reviews for the last 6 to 12 months? How many transactions have they done? You can get great stuff on eBay uh, for, for great prices these days. You just have to shop around. And if you're buying vintage equipment, um, first of all, you want to get the remote control. If it's a, a CD player, it's obviously much better for convenience to have that. And uh, after speaking to a few people in the vinyl community and friends around town, um, if you're going to get a vintage CD player, just focus on a single drawer um, deck. Do not get one of those carousels or the multiple cartridges. More potential for, for moving parts and things just to go wrong, especially when you're talking vintage. And... Uh, if you can get the original box uh, and packaging material, even better. And this seller happened to be advertising the fact that, yes, he had the remote included, and he had the original box and packing materials. So I have all of that now, and um, it just puts a little more confidence in the product that you're getting. You know, someone actually took some care to retain all of this stuff and preserve it. So uh, hopefully the unit you're going to get is going to have very little wear and tear it's gonna it's gonna work great so far that is the case with uh, this rotel uh, cd player which is a rcd 930ax it was an entry level model in 1995 but certainly serves my needs for the rare occasion when i need to hear some of these cds that i've been highlighting um how about this desert life counting crows uh, are you prepared to pay $1,100 for that vinyl uh, record that uh, is the only issue that came out in uh, 1996? I'm not. Um, so I have the CD. Um, this is the great uh, CD with the lead single uh, hanging around, um, track one, side one. Um, Mrs. Potter's Lullaby, All My Friends, High Life, Colorblind. Uh, St. Robinson in his Cadillac Dream, 
Uh, always been a big fan of uh, Counting Crows and Adam Duritz. Um, another funny Instagram aside, Adam Duritz during the pandemic decided he was going to be a home cook and he was uh, running through recipes and cooking things on Instagram. Absolutely hilarious, fun to watch, uh, a great uh, a great follow on Instagram. I haven't seen what he's been up to lately. How about Beck's Midnight Vultures? Come on, when are we going to get a reissue of this thing? Also, Sky, you know, it's like $1,000 if you can find one, uh, the, the record. So, there we have it. Uh, this is due to be uh, reissued soon, I'm hoping. Fantastic album. I saw R.E.M. on this tour at the Montreux Jazz Fest. The first album after the uh, departure of Bill Berry. Lots of Beach Boise and Beatlesque uh, elements on this album, but a great, great, great album. Very, very underrated as well, in my opinion. Up, released in 1998. That's just a quick one. I wanted to give everyone a quick update on what to do if you're in a quandary and you want to listen to CDs. In my case, I wanted to get a vintage deck. Mission accomplished. I'm very happy. Uh, I will be back very soon with something a little more vinyl record oriented. Stay tuned.